somebody mentioned earlier that they were having issues with getting a bio patch behind their needle. There are several ways to do this, and usually if you can't get a bio patch behind your needle, chances are either A, your needle's not um, put in correctly, or B, your nurse just doesn't know how to do it. Um, there are several ways to do it, and since I'm already accessed and that video is still stuck on my iPad trying to get to my Mac to upload it, we're going to access Felix after I turn off the lamp behind me so that you guys can actually see what's going on. Um, this is a standard needle that was too short for me, so um, no big deal. And bio patch. We are going to pretend like Felix has a port. We're going to feel around for his port. Oh look, there it is. There are several ways to get the bio patch behind the needle. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove the protective cover from the needle. This is a 0.75 needle. Um, let me get my hand behind here so that you guys can see it. Yep, they're that short. For normal adults, um, 0.75 is usually too short. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, we learned that the hard way. With me, with several patients, um, we were never able to get the 0.75s to work. Um, usually one to one and a quarter is what works for most patients. You can do two things. This side, the printing, this side is always up on the bio patch. And bio patches are um, split rings so that they can either settle over the needle this way or this way or whichever way you do it. But there's two ways to actually get them on. Some nurses actually put the bio patch on the needle and then access the patient. So we're going to hold our safety wings. Again, we're going to pretend here like Felix has a port. We're going to stabilize his port. We're going to put him on and flatten out our wings that way perfectly acceptable. No problem. Obviously, if we were doing this on a patient, we would be using gloves, sterile technique, all that other good stuff. Felix doesn't actually have a port, so we're just kind of poking it at stuffing. So let's pull him back out and take the bio patch off. The method that I use is take it, stabilize the, the port, poke it straight in. There is usually enough play with the needle that you can kind of wiggle it back there. Bio patches on Felix, no problem. And the last way was actually the way that a nursing instructor taught me, um, particularly when I first started doing self-access and was having issues getting my bio patch on. Take Felix, stabilize him. The needle, you guys can't really see it because he's black and, well, the needle's tiny. The needle is only halfway in. So we're going to take our bio patch. Spread it behind the needle, snug it up, push the needle the rest of the way in. And then at this point, we'd put a tegaderm over Felix, and Felix would feel all better, and we would feel all better, no problem. There were several ways to do that. Um, unless you have a sensitivity to chlorhexidine which is the um, CHG, chlor chlorhexidine glutinate, is the antibiotic that is used in biopatches. Unless you have a sensitivity to chlorhexidine, and then there are other chlorhexidine patches out there, um, non-chlorhexidine, I'm sorry, there are other non-chlorhexidine patches out there that you can use. Um, unless you have a reaction to it, make sure that it's on there. Um, sepsis is not fun. Anybody that's been through it will tell you sepsis is not fun. Um, not only that, but port site infections in general are not fun. 
Um, sometimes they can save the port by running high doses of vancomycin um, and other broad spectrum antibiotics, but all that does is make you feel terrible and you end up in the hospital for five, seven, 14, 18 days um, trying to save the port. And then sometimes the port has to come out anyway, and then you're on a pick line or a midline for six weeks waiting on your port site to heal and the infection to go away so that they can then turn around and put one on the other side of your chest. Or if you're like some people I know, mine fortunately have always been able to go back in this space because mine have been coming in and out, in and out, in and out for about 20 years now. My first port was actually down here in my arm. And that's how far ports and I go back. My treatment was done. They took it out. Cancer came back, put the, put the port back in. Treatment was out. They took it out. This one is in permanently because years of chemo have completely trashed my peripheral veins. There's not anything left. So everything is done through my central line, my port, um, blood draws, IV fluids, all of that good stuff. I'm accessed 24 seven. Make sure if you can get that little patch back on there that you can. Um, if you're not using the bio patch and you have issues, get the port coverings or pit coverings that have the chlorhexidine glutinate patch on them. Yeah, it was sterile when it went on, but skin microbes are funny. Maybe your nurse didn't scrub long enough, didn't scrub a large enough area. Um, maybe you just had a stubborn piece of bacteria that didn't want to come off. There are a billion different reasons that you can follow sterile technique perfectly and still get sick. Particularly if you self-access and you're not used to self-accessing. If you have a nurse that doesn't know what they're doing. I have had home health care nurses that did not know what they were doing. Seriously. I'm not kidding. Ask questions. Be your own advocate. Make sure that if you can get that little patch on there, you get the little patch on there. Like I said, those are the three ways that I was taught to do it. There may be more. If somebody has more, by all means, raise their hand and let me know. I, like I said, I did an entire self-access video. It's about 25 minutes long earlier so that you can skip to the specific parts that you need. Um, make sure that your nurses don't break sterile procedure. That's another one. Please. If you see a nurse that takes your needle and flushes your needle and primes it over the sterile dressing area, make them start over. Once it's wet, it's not sterile. And I've had nurses tell me, oh, well, it's still sterile. It's got a plastic packing. No. Once it's wet, bacteria out of the air can stick to that. That's why we wear masks when we do sterile procedures. That's why the patient should wear a mask. That's why the provider should wear a mask. You're not even supposed to breathe over that area or wave a non-sterile hand over that area. You just don't do it. I don't even wave non-gloved hands over that area. Again, if you have any questions, you still have issues getting the, um, the bio patch in, let me know. I have no problem talking to your nurse. You should have no problem asking your nurse, hey, I saw this, can we try it? All nurses should be trained in those three ways to get a bio patch on. Thanks. <laughs>